I like to start my morning this way. 6 a.m. in Bali. What's up? So, wow, that was pretty fucking obnoxious. Anyway, I have good reason to be obnoxious because I am uploading right now the very first episode of my podcast, which is called, well, the episode is called 001 Quentin Alums because it's the first episode and I'm interviewing Quentin Alums. Uh, but it's a people podcast and I'm uploading it through Anchor. And uh, yes, you should check it out. You should actually check it out. I freaking love that episode for two reasons. Number one, the audio quality is shitty and I talked about that when I recorded that episode. But also, re-listening to that episode, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting because we talk about a lot of random shit. We go off on off, off a lot of tangents about his history, his background, like how and why he dropped out of college and the companies he's running and about IoT and AR and like eSports and Batman and um, what else did we talk about? Everything and anything. And I freaking love it and you should check it out. And please, I'm gonna put a link down below um, to the anchor and then you can choose whatever platform you wanna use it to listen to. Um, but yeah, let me know, like write a comment, you know, leave me your thoughts, whatever you think. I know the audio is not the best, but I'm going to work on that. And um, yes, I'm really, really pumped right now. Actually, I have the second episode. I'm going to record it tonight with the beautiful Amanda McWright. And um, yeah, check it out, please, 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 pretty please, check it out. Ricky, can you put it up? somewhere here also so people can either click down below in the thingy or up here somewhere because I really want you to listen okay thanks have you clicked yet okay as it's now raining for I don't know five hours or something you guys can't see much can you actually yeah it's raining and uh, I wanted to go to the gym but um, I think I'm not gonna go well I'm gonna see maybe it's gonna stop um, I can recap uh, I can recap the book from yesterday <clears throat> the brain audit so I put together like a note and actually I can try to do it like this and then I can see whether I actually got it down so the brain audit basically um, talks about the seven steps on how to um, in what order you have to address things to sell to someone to anyone anything and um, the first thing is the problem first you've got to state the problem that you're solving and I think he, I agree with him that many people forego this step and already go from to the solution immediately. They don't talk about what is the actual problem. So, for example, you say, um, I increase your revenue, or I create awesome videos for you. That's already a solution. You're already talking about the solution, but you haven't established the problem. And he talks about why it's so important to first talk about the problem, and it's because only the problem gets you the, inten the attention that you then need to be able to sell to that person because unless you create that problem they're not interested in a solution you don't need a solution for a problem you don't have so you first have to hone in on the problem and so example for example if you're say instead of saying i create awesome videos for you um you can say have you ran into bad marketing videos for your agency and then you create a trigger because that people is now like damn I remember that when we made a video and it was just shitty and it didn't sell anything so now you establish the problem then the second step is to um, to present your solution so that could be we create awesome videos okay I think I'm actually not going to talk about all of these specific things but there are seven things that you all have to check box First, the problem. Then you introduce your solution. Then you figure out your target profile. Then the trigger. 
then you go to the objections. One of the interesting things about the objections is that um, they're natural. People always have objections. Even if you're selling them the most amazing thing ever, they're still gonna find reasons why they shouldn't get it. And once you understand that, it's like when you get an objection, and that's something that I took from this, it's like, oh, okay, this is not a bad thing. It's by definition a human thing. It's always gonna happen. And someone objecting actually means that they're interested because if they're not interested, they're just gonna walk away. They have no reason to object. But the objection shows that there's some interest. And now it's your job to give a reasonable explanation of why that objection isn't valid. So the next step after that is the testimonial. Um, one thing I took away from that is that um, you, you wanna have, you wanna, actually is my shit getting wet? Phew. Okay, um, you wanna have testimonials that are constructed. So you don't want to, the reason why testimonials often don't work is because they're sugar-coated. It's like, oh my God, this person is so amazing and everything she does and he does is amazing and the service is amazing and the product is amazing and everything's perfect. And that, me, that in the first glance, you're thinking like when you get a testimonial like that, it's perfect. But then actually, if you put yourself in the shoes of someone else who's reading that testimonial, whether that's on your website, on your product page, you know, whatever, it's like, that just seems so fucking fake. And so it has no impact. So what you wanna do instead is have a testimonial where that person first talks about that pain or that struggle or that doubt that they had before they got your product. So for example, that could start with, if you know one of your biggest objections is price point, then one of your testimonials should be, um, by person X you know in the beginning I really thought that the product was too expensive and it really was expensive but I saw the value and it turned out to be da -da 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 -da. if um, you just play the testimonial into your uh, objections risk reversal that's the next step you want to remove the risk from the buyer and put it onto yourself. Um, it's like the refund is what you expect, right? Like if you go and buy food and it tastes like shit, you expect that restaurant to refund you and either give you a new meal or you have to don't have to pay for that meal. Like that just seems natural. But then if you're on the side of the person offering the service, you're like, oh, no, 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 no the other person should take the risk which is just flawed and so like having guarantees of like money back and and putting some systems into place which show that person that you believe in your own service and that you believe you can deliver and that you put the risk on yourself and that if you don't deliver they get their money back or at least part of their money back or they get a refund or they get a new product or whatever that is but the risk needs to be on your on your side and then last point uniqueness um, that's the last part and obviously you need to be unique there needs to be something about you that differentiates yourself from all the competitors because if you don't do that then then they're at the stage where you establish the problem you show that there's a solution you show that you can deliver that solution by having testimonials on all of them but then they get to this point and they're like, awesome, thanks for this information. Now I'm gonna look for other people doing this. And, um, but if you are unique, then they can't go and look for other people who are doing that because you're unique. You're the only person doing it in this particular way. And um, so it's important. And so yeah, those are the, those are the seven steps. God damn it, why do I still have that? But let me, I want to figure out where my day went wrong because I have this weird frustration feeling. I get that sometimes where I'm just not happy with the situation and it's a weird feeling. 
And um, I don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is. And so my day started out amazing. I was very productive in the morning. I worked until I think 1.30 p.m. right when I got up. Usually I stop at 12 to eat, but this time I was in the flow with the podcast, uploading the first episode, which you should check out. So everything was amazing. Then I had my lunch, like I think at 1.30, 2 p.m. ish, which was amazing. It was raining outside, which was super cool. I was enjoying it because I had to get stuff done anyway. Did my email, did my blog, did all of the things I had to get done. And I think then it was 4.30 p.m. And I still had two things to do, which I wanted to do today, which I always plan out the day before. By the way, I don't know why I have light on right now, which is going to the gym and go and buy some groceries, especially the peanut butter. And then at 4.30, I realized it's still raining and fucking showers. So for both of the things, like, I'd get soaked, so, but, so I didn't go. But I think where I went wrong is that I never really made the decision of saying like, okay, it doesn't make sense, I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna do this instead. But instead I was like, ah, this kinda sucks, I wanted to go, but should I go? But ah, it's kinda raining, uh, let me just wait another 30 minutes, maybe then it stops raining and then I can still go. And so I kind of found something to fill the 30 minutes, which was basically like nothing, which was like scrolling through Instagram and answering a couple of messages and just doing bullshit work. And then obviously after 30 minutes, it didn't stop raining. So then again, I didn't make a decision. I was like, ah, I wish I could go. I really want to go. I st could still make it if, you know, if it stops raining. So again, I pushed it off for like 30 minutes and you know, again, didn't really do anything. And um, yeah, then it was the point where I realized, oh shit, like even if it stops raining now, I can't do both anymore, groceries and the gym. And um, then I started to realize that I can't go, so I don't have food. And so now I had to order food, but there were no good food options. So now I ordered pizza, which, Makes me fucking mad because pizza is not good for you. <laughs> so, you kind of see what's happening in my brain. It sometimes sucks in here. Um, and I know that it's all on me that it's just, you know, you know, making that decision and that I can't do anything about like it raining. And I accepted that for a while and then until I didn't anymore. Anyway. I now have an interview or podcast with the amazing Amanda McWright, so I'm super excited about that. Um, I'm gonna check up on that later. It would just make it fall fall out. Yeah. I was like, oh, I give up, and then like it like fell out of the pocket. And John's like, Amanda, like you know that's not how you put it in the wall, right? And I was like, What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? I literally didn't even know. But that's in the video and it's funny. So, I just recorded the second podcast with Amanda, with the, the Amanda McWright, and um, it's gonna come out next Saturday. But before that, you guys gotta watch. So Amanda has a YouTube channel and she has amazing videos on there. And this is by far my favorite one so far, which is called Trampoline Your Woos Away. I don't even know the word woos, woos, what does it mean? Woes? It's like your problems away. Trampling oh. your problems away. And but also, can... Drake used the word woe in his song, running through the six with, with his woes. Oh. <laughs> and I think he meant that as friends, maybe? I don't know. But you can watch. Sure. Why is it not loading? Come on, now I want to show it. <laughs> Little house. Oh, you hear my voice. I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> And now, it's the best of, video. Like, goals is that on, house, the best part is when Amanda drops her something. phone on it and just keeps it there for like a solid 30 seconds while she keeps it's jumping. It's so good to 
to get your energy. But anyway, I'm gonna link that video up somewhere like here or here, and you can all go check it out because it's amazing. I did have a lot of fun jumping on that trampoline. <laughs> it looks a lot of fun. I want, I want sometimes, a trampoline sometimes right sometimes now. Sometimes I will literally open my door in the morning and yeah. just look at it and be like, today is a trampoline day. <laughs> and I was like, before I do anything, I'll just jump on the trampoline. And that's like every morning? You're like, no, that's not every morning. But sometimes, probably at least once a week, I should make it more daily. Yeah, it should be a daily habit. It's good though because it gets your energy out and yeah. get all amped up. But thank you so much, Amanda. And of um, when the when the episode is up, I'm gonna put it also in the vlog. But yeah, you should check it out because these people are amazing, and I'm pretty boring, but the other people are pretty interesting. So. Hard to wake up when there's no alarm to wake you up. Sitting, breathing, doing all the things I hate, love, but why not?